Welcome back to One Beer Job. I'm Justin, and today what we're gonna make is a guinea pig or small little rodent uh, habitat. Could be for hamsters, could be for anything else, but you have just small things. We have guinea pigs, and we've had guinea pigs for quite a bit. Um, I made one a while back, and I'm gonna show you that one. And um, we thought we had two female guinea pigs, but in the end, one was a male, one was a female. They did a little squeaky squeaky and had babies. So we just had babies three days ago. So I have to make another cage to separate the males from the females so I don't have any more baby guinea pigs. But anyway, we're going with a local brew today from 13 Stripes. Uh, the beer is called Not My King. I'm assuming that's because, you know, Game of Thrones. Sounds crispy. That is a delicious beer. It's a lager, 4.6% alcohol. Pretty nice. All right, I'm gonna show you the modified version and then I'm gonna show you what a finished product looks like and then we'll go through the steps along the way. All right, so <clears throat> this right here is the beginning stages of just the wood part of the guinea pig habitat. It's gonna be a second level. There's gonna be a ramp that goes from the bottom level up to the top. Um, and you'll see that I've already labeled some of these things that we'll get back to here in a second. This is one of the other modifications that we found out from the last one. The last one I made this attached, this upper part attached. Uh, so it was pretty tough to get into the back corner you know, for the cleaning. Um, so what I did today is I made this removable. So now we can clean the entire cage uh, and just take the top part off. So that's kind of neat. And it wasn't, and it didn't add any more. Well, it actually did add quite a bit of work, but whatever. It's kind of cool now. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go inside and see the normal guinea pig at oh now that we're going inside i don't need my son all right hang on all right here's the other guinea pig habitat that we did earlier you can see that i made that fixed it's the same type of thing there's the ramp leading up to that upper level um you get to see some of these little baby guinea pigs. There's his little ones. There's the mama. Anyway. Oh. Someone's going to have to fix that. So this is what the end product is going to look like. You can see that I have some corrugated plastic at the bottom. It's waterproof. It's pee-proof. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to make it very similar to that. Hang on. All right, so we're gonna get right to it real quick. Uh, I found these wire things at Bed Bath & Beyond. Uh, they're like metal storage blocks. Back in the day in college, they're like college dorm room, you know, storage blocks. They're metal. Um, I think those are like 40 or 50 bucks. Uh, but you're gonna need a box of them, just one full box of them. Of course, you're gonna be using the chop saw. You're gonna have to use both drills. DeWalt, if you'd like to sponsor me, I'd love it. Um, and we're also going to be using Craig pocket holes. All right, so we're going to be using the Craig bit. You're going to be using one and one quarter soft wood Craig screws. Um, of course, tape measure. And then if you're doing the top part, then you definitely want to get these fluted dowels. All right, you're going to definitely be using this picture hanger clip. And I'm going to show you that here in a second, why we need picture hanger clips. That's basically for the, uh, for the ladder going up. Four inch cable ties. We got the thin ones just because we know that we're going to use this bit or a small bit to get right through all of that and create those cable ties that you've already seen before. And then here is the cut list that you're going to make. And I'm going to hold it on here for a little bit. So that way you can pause it and then I'll go through 
where all of these things go. And again, you can watch the video, rewatch it, um, and be able to be able to disseminate a lot of this information. All right, so on the bottom level, now the upper level takes quite a few more cuts, as you can see. Um, but on this bottom level, 36 inches, and you need you need quite a bit of them. So one, two. Three, four, oh, I should have put eight on here. Duh. You need 36. You need eight of those. Not six. You need eight. You need eight. 36 inches. All right, and those are going to be the table legs coming from the ground all the way up. So those are the 36. The, 30, the 31 inch pieces, these are going to go to the front and the back. So you're going to need four of those. One right there one right there on the bottom and then you'll definitely need to use those back here as well from here and then there all right um, next you're gonna need the sides which are 23 or 29 and 3 8 29 and 3 8 and that's gonna go from these sides and you're gonna need four of those so one here one there and then of course over on the other side and then 36 and a half, because we're gonna make this a full box that's that's gonna be 30, 36 inch square. Um, and so all of these rungs right through there, you're gonna need all 36 and a half of those. What is there, seven? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven of those. All right, so that is just the bottom part of it. Um, that's, if you just wanted to just do the bottom, that's your cut list. Uh, now I think I used uh, one by four by eights. I know I used one by four by eights, but I, uh, I ended up buying ten, and I had one left over uh, for this entire project. So I would assume that you probably only need seven if you're just doing the bottom piece. Now when you're doing the upper part, it's a little bit more uh, difficult uh, just because of all the different cut cuts involved. Uh, but you can see that when I I have those Craig's all on the inside and then underneath. So I put the Craig tools on the bottom of this so we didn't see them up top. Also, I thought that it would probably give a little bit more support um, if it was pressing down on the screw rather than the screw pressing itself down because these things, if you don't get them right, right down in here, you can see that there's only about a half inch there and those things will break off and chip. I found that out the hard way. Which brings me to this. On the back of your Craig tool, on the back of your Craig tool, you can see that it's listed as half inch, three quarter, all the way down. Uh, I made the mistake of just using the half inch one. So, right here on the side, you push this in and it slides up. So, that's what I was nor normally doing with the half inch, half inch. And I realized that I was chipping or I was breaking those pockets off when I was screwing them in. So I made it, so I made it right just a little bit longer. Okay, instead of being all the way down at one half of an inch. So just a mental note to that. All right, anyway, getting back to the top. All right, so the 38 inches, you're gonna need four of these ones. That's the top piece going across. So that's a 38. This right here, the back side of that one, is a 38. And then these bottom pieces. So this bottom piece and that bottom piece are 38. All right? 31, you only need one of those, and that's here in the middle. That's that middle piece in the bottom of the cage. The 36 and a half is this one back piece. You're only going to need one of those, 36 and a half. All right, the 13 and a halfs. Now, come all the way back around. The 13 and a halfs are going to go on the bottom piece of the upper part. So you're going to need two. So if you see what I did here, I tried to make it a little bit more sturdy. I wanted the front just to be all one, one piece without having the other piece coming in. But then I realized that I'm going to need... Uh, this bottom piece to fit a little bit better. So I wanted to go one looking that way, one looking the other, 
hope, hopefully making it a little bit more sturdy. All right, so 13 and a half, so you're going to need two of those. Uh, 12 inch, the two here at the top. Again, that's 12 inches. The 14 and a half here in the front. Now, what I did is I made this space compared to the other one that you saw inside. I made this just to be just to fit the uh, the one by four or the one by eight that I'm gonna be using as the ramp, which is over there being glued. And I'll show you guys that here in a second. But that's the 14 and a half on, on both sides. Uh, that way it keeps that centered. The six and a half piece are the two internal pieces that are off to the side. So you can see that it's right here. And we'll need two of those, one for each side. And then the five inch are gonna be all the all the middle pieces so all those middle pieces around there are all five inches there's 12 of those all right now the ramp itself is still being glued um, but I took a one by eight just a simple little one by eight uh, cut it down to 20 inches and then chipped off and made a 45 cut on both sides and then I took the rest of that piece and just started chopping it at about one quarter of an inch to make to make the little stairs so that way they're the same width and they're not so high that a guinea pig you know would trip on them or anything I have to jump over them but just create a little bit added traction I guess I don't know if they even need it or not I just thought it was a cool thing to do sort of like that other one all right so now I'm going to show you how that ramp how I attach that ramp using these picture hanger clips so a picture hanger clip all right it does have one it has a screw hole and it's got a nail hole over on the out on the other side what i did is i bent off this piece that that clips in i just bent that off so it broke off just so that it was straight okay and then i clipped that to the 45 degree angle and then left and left the hanging part open and then I put two holes in the wood and I'm going to show you that one real quick so the ramp all right those right there are the two picture hangers right there and I put a hole in them just right there in the wood and this is how they attach yep pretty cool nerd just a straight up nerd all right all right so that's how we did this and now I could go through some of the other parts with it so since I've already done all the things I just matched that Craig tool to the edge of the wood in order to create those pocket holes all right and I gave it a little bit of space right off the edge but the Craig tool itself is pretty slick you clamp it down and you drill right through this hole and then when I slide it over again giving a little bit of space to the side then I would drill through this hole and then that would give this look. Actually, that glare is probably pretty bad. We'll give that pocket hole look. I did all my pocket holes on the inside. Now, just to make it look a little bit nicer, since we have a male and a female cage now, we're going to call this one the man cave, and then the other one the she shed. Wife, wife thought that was pretty cool. That's pretty funny. And then what we did, what we're going to do now, is we're going to drill the holes. We're going to drill the holes for our cage to fit right inside. So because I gave it a foot, and these things are 12 inches, they fit right up to the top of the edge. So now we're going to drill all of these holes and be ready to go. Hold on. All right, so did a couple of them right here just so you could see how I'm doing it. Um, I'm drilling from the inside out, and I know that it's chipping a little bit over here, but 
I'm not going to try to guess on on where to place these things. So I'll just I'll go back through and hit it. But I want y'all to see something else though. Um, it's 70 degrees here. It's like December 13th or something like that. It's 70 degrees here in South Carolina, but the sap that's coming off of this because it's so warm. So. That's that. But yeah, that's what we're doing. So I'm basically just drilling from one side and I get it right next, right next to the to the wire. And then I do the other side and then pull the zip tie through. Um, these four inch ones, you have to get right close. You have to get really close to those uh, to those wires, almost where the, the drill bit on those four inch ones. Again, I don't want to waste a lot of stuff but I get them real close um, and you can see that there's not much that I have to cut off and that way I can just cut them clean off and there's not much sticking out so so that's what we're doing we're gonna install the cage part of it all the way around real quick and then and then that corrugated plastic is the that's the tricky part um, being able to measure all that stuff out but I'm gonna show you guys how to do that too hang on all right, so got all that done. It didn't take too long. About one beer. All right, next we're going to go over to the corrugated plastic that it, that we have. So this plastic right here, it's the same stuff that you would see like politician signs and so on and so forth. It's the same type of thing. Um, Lowe's didn't have a 4x8 sheet. They only had 3x6. So we're going to have to make it work. We're going to use some white duct tape to connect some of those things. But it is 36 inches wide uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and mark a I like the four inch a four inch flap that goes basically up here so four inches four inches sort of allows them not to get out okay so that's what we're looking for so that four inch is gonna be that flap that's gonna come up to the side so measured four four from one side and it's 36 inches so I'm gonna add that four over on the other end so there it is right there right at 40 and that's uh, gonna be that and then the other four inches for the other flap so that's 44 so we're gonna make a cut at this 44 and then I'm gonna show you how we're gonna scar one side of it basically the back side of this um, and then or flip it um, and that way you can you don't scar all the way through it you just cut like all the way to the one uh, level. It'll make more sense when I have all that done. So hang on. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and start cutting these. Uh, but first, still have to have a drink. All right, so again, I've already showed you the measurements, but now what we're gonna do on the very end of this on the 44 inches we're going to attach just a, a level and we're going to press all the way through and we're going to go ahead and just cut this thing completely off we're going to press all the way through on it and and get that cut you can hear it because we're going against the grain on this so we're going against that the ribs This is the this is the part where it can get tricky. So you can see that it it folds open, and if you didn't get all the way through, you're just going to take that knife and just go right through the other edge from the other side. Make sure that it's cut clean through. There we go. Now the next part of this. And I've already done this one side, so I'm going to show you how to do the other side. You're going to do the same thing that we just did, except that you're only going to you're going to go through just a little bit. You're just basically just going to scar the top of it, just so it it'll rip a little bit. 
So again, get your blade out. We're not trying to go all the way through. I'm just trying to get through the top layer of it. You don't have to press that hard. It's PVC. All right, now, all we're gonna do, if you look right up here to the top, is we're just gonna force this open. Just gonna force this open a little bit. And that's gonna create the edge without ripping all the way through. Okay, that's gonna create the edge without ripping all the way through. And now I've already done the other side. So now, Again. And again, that means if there's no holes, that means it's not going to leak through. All right, so that's one side of it. We're going to go ahead and cut the other sides right over here and then drop it in, drop it in place. All right, hang on. All right, so white duct tape, just tape for it, you know, just the four inch thing there. And now I'm going to. Just do the, the side, you can see I've already got one side up. So I'm gonna try to prop this camera up here and just show y'all what I'm doing. Four inches or so of duct tape. Place it on one half of it and then fold it over. And then lift that flap up. Press the duct tape in and then flip it over the corner. Just give it a little bit more security. Same thing over on this side. And we'll be able to put it in. It's like half and half tape, you know, half on one side, half on the other. And that should P-proof it. So, now what you have is this nice box. This box is going to go into the cage. I put it right at 36 inches, so it's going to have to be finagled in there a little bit, you know, like press it in, just so it's all nice and tight, but hold on, I'm going to need two hands for this. All right, so press down nice and well. Now, uh, one thing that I will say is that you want to make sure that you can see that some of these grates, like this, I put those towards the wood, because I found out on earlier projects that this corrugated plastic gets stuck on those things. If they're not in if they're not there so all right so there's that and we're ready to put some fleece blankets in it and good to go so I'm gonna call this project done uh, whatever you do uh, to the bottom you'd certainly do to the top up here um, and that's that's what we're gonna tackle next but I'm just gonna go ahead and sign off and call this one beer job done um, one of my stair cleats came off when I pulled it off, so I have to re-glue it, so I won't be able to get that in. Um, but yeah, um, hang on. All right, well, signing off for One Beer Job. Again, I'm Justin with One Beer Job. Uh, please like the video if you like it. Uh, and hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you have a little varmint running around your house or something like that that 
Uh, you could put a cage together for them. Uh, this was two days project. Probably cost me a total of 130 bucks, 130 dollars except for the beer. Uh, speaking of, this is how many beer job it was. Hold on. So initially, I thought I might have had COVID, but I was realizing that I was drinking Mick Ultras, and they have no taste anyway. So I had to switch to some good beer. So there you go, uh, one beer job. Please like the like the video. I appreciate all you guys' comments and everything like that. Some of my other videos are, are doing quite well. Um, so please subscribe to the channel. We'll do some crazy stuff. Uh, like I got a, I'm gonna do a ring doorbell here in the next couple weeks or something like that. Um, and I'm sure now that Christmas season is upon us, that I'm sure I'll have more projects to do. So like, uh, smash that like button and subscribe to the channel and uh again enjoy your beer tours i'm always looking for a sponsorship send me some pint banquets that's what i need all right see ya cheers